We're back, and we are continuing our conversation with a distinguished public servant, a former member of Congress and former ambassador, Pete Hoekstra, also now the chairman of our Center for Security Policy's advisory board. Uh, Congressman, we were talking about the counterintelligence problem, the Chinese threat, the elite capture and influence operations. Talk a little bit about from your own firsthand experience on the Hill and, and what you've seen since you left, what the Chinese have been able to do within our political leadership as well. Well, if you go back, um, you know, in 2000, 2001 is when Congress was voting on whether to provide normal trade relations, which had previously been uh, identified as permanent uh, normal trade relations, preferential trade benefits uh, with China. And I, I voted against it. It probably ended up being one of the best votes I ever cast in Congress saying no uh, to this. For some reason, uh, I was smart enough at that time to say, you know what, China, I just don't trust those folks. Um, and most of my colleagues ended up voting for it, believing that, hey, if we open up to China, uh, they will change their behavior. Uh, and in reality, what we've seen in the last 20 years is that they have made their behavior much worse. Uh, you and, know, and been changing ours. Changing <laughs> our fair to say. Yeah, you know, especially seen, uh, on the Hill. And we've seen it, uh, Peter Schweitzer in his uh, latest book, I think it's called uh, Caught Red-Handed or something. Just, you know, just plain red-handed, I think, yeah. Yeah, and identified you know, the influence that uh, they may have had on uh, John Boehner, uh, the Speaker of the House at the time. You know, the Senate had voted to uh, go after the Juan. And for some reason, we uh, the Speaker would never let that vote come up uh, in the House of Representatives. Later on, we found out, uh, and Peter Schweitzer identified, that he was tied very, very deeply uh, into, the, uh, uh, into China. Uh, we've seen the Eric Sawwell, uh, the congressman from... Uh, California, who now sits on the Intelligence Committee, still sits on the Intelligence Committee, uh, who was compromised by uh, a young Chinese woman. And so, you know, what Honey trap, as yeah, they say. Yeah. You know, whether it's uh, financial incentives, whether it's a, a honey trap or something like this, China will do anything and everything that they can uh, to gain a little bit of leverage, which evolves into a lot of leverage over our elected officials. Right. I fear some actually haven't an ideological predisposition to the Chinese Communist Party's philosophy as well. You add that into the mix, and it's an unbelievably important problem. Uh, we're going to continue our conversation about that in the days ahead, uh, Pete, as it is not going away, alas. But I did want to turn to another topic that I think you've been doing some cutting-edge research into and are beginning to raise uh, appropriately warnings about. It involves the World Health Organization, an outfit that the Chinese Communist Party, as it happens, uh, now controls. Um, a new uh, agreement is being forged that would give it still more power, despite its abysmal performance under Chinese control, to be sure, in this coronavirus uh, pandemic. Talk a little bit about what uh, is in the offing here and its implications. Well, uh, their target, and they're, they're looking for an international treaty, uh, some form like that, but uh, the timeline is, is straightforward. 2022, they're going to be gathering information, developing the proposals. 2023, they are going to present these uh, preliminary findings to the WHO, a WHO assembly, as they call it, uh, looking to approve an international treaty by 2024. So, you know, this is a problem that to many may seem, well, hey, Pete, that's two years away. Now, that's, uh, that's a very, very short time in terms of international treaties and agreements. Uh, and really what this is, is, is it's a massive power grab by the World Health Organization. Uh, you know, and I had a lot of experience with this organization, uh, especially when President Trump pulled us out of that. I was serving as the ambassador uh, to the Netherlands at the time. And then all of my colleagues in Europe, uh, you know, Australia, they said, Pete, Pete, you know, you can't pull out in the middle of an, a pandemic. We need this organization. Yes, we know it is flawed, uh, 
um, and we will hold them accountable and we will do an after action review once we get control of this pandemic. Yeah, trust us. Number one, none of those countries are asking for an after action review. None of them are working to hold uh, the WHO accountable for its miserable performance uh, and it's adhering to the Chinese Communist Party line about this pandemic, you know, never holding China accountable for, you know, not sharing information with us, uh, the seriousness of this uh, pandemic and those types of things, and never going through and trying to find out exactly where uh, this has come from. So there's no accountability to reform the organization, yet, you know, our allies, France, Germany, the Netherlands, uh, they're saying and they're moving ahead. They're moving ahead aggressively on. But let's talk about let's talk about what it what they're moving ahead towards, Congressman. Uh, it, it's a power grab in what respect and and with what effect, do you think? Well, yeah, they, here, here's what they're looking for. All right. I had I wanted to make you know, this is a relatively new topic. They want an international agreement that is legally binding and enforceable meaning an international organization that is going to be able to go to some other international organization and say, you know, this is what every country needs to do. This is what America needs to do and be held accountable to. So legally binding. They want it to be financed internationally. Okay. That's one of the things that I'm assuming they want legally enforceable uh, that, you know, every country needs to pay something. We know what that means. It means America pays. We pay for the UN, we pay for NATO, and these other countries never go. Then it talks about, you know, we need to develop more tools to, you know, anticipate and deal with a pandemic. And of course, this will all be run by Tedros and the W Health Organ or World Health Organization. Why? Because as he says, we are one humanity. We are one planet. We are one health organization. We are one WHO. It is a massive power grab. Uh, and in the voice of uh, my former colleague, Rahm Emanuel, Tedros is not letting this crisis uh, go away. He's going to take it, every advantage of it. Go to waste. Yeah. Um, and, and Congressman, let me just be clear. In the event that there is another pandemic crisis or perhaps a new outbreak of coronavirus, a new strain, new problem of some kind. What the World Health Organization has in mind, if I understand you correctly, is being able to declare not only a global emergency, but to dictate to nations what they are going to do about it, whether that's lockdowns or whether that's vaccine mandates or passports for mandates uh, enforcement or in some other way, what we're all going to have to do at the dictate of some unaccountable, unelected international body, and we're going to have to pay for it on top of it. Have I got that about right? Uh, absolutely. And I, you, you hit one very important point. You know, we're going to go to the polls in November, and we're going to hold people accountable. In America, mm -hmm. we'll be able to hold you know, uh, well, not Cuomo, he's not running, but in Michigan, we'll be able to hold Governor Whitmer accountable for her miserable performance. In Florida, the people of Florida will be able to hold Ron DeSantis accountable for what, you know, he brought to the free state of Florida. But we will be hold, able to hold them accountable for their performance and the results that they delivered or did not deliver. Tedros wants an unaccountable World Health Organization that can pass dictates to all of us, and we will have no mechanism to hold him accountable. This is unconscionable. I'm so glad that you've raised a warning here about it, Congressman Pete Hoekstra, and I know that we will be discussing it further and taking action, uh, notably with our Committee on the Present Danger, China, because China will be one of the principal beneficiaries of this arrangement, you can be sure. It's part of uh, its global domination scheme, using Tedros, uh, one of its puppets, to help effect it. We'll fight it on the beaches. We'll fight it in the streets, as they say. Congressman, you're the, a great American. We're delighted to have you with us. Come back to us again with updates soon, if you would.